Hey there everybody, it's Pastor Jason. Got a little bit of a different camera setup today. I'm not sure if I like it. I'm fairly close to you. But we're going to go with it. Today in Daily Devotionals, we're in Matthew 14. Getting close to wrapping up the New Testament. I'm glad you're sticking around with me. Let me pray. We'll get into chapter 14 in just a second. Father, thank you for your love and your kindness and your, your grace and your wisdom. May we have faith in you. May our faith in you bring us hope and joy. We praise you for your sacrifice, your power, your, your righteousness, your holiness. May we seek to serve you. In your name, amen. Okay, here we go. Chapter 14, verse 1. Got a lot, we're going to cover a lot of ground today. 14 is kind of a smaller chapter in John, not small, but it covers a lot. So hold on to your hats. Here we go. Chapter 14, verse 1. At the time, Herod the Tetrarch heard the news about Jesus and said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead. And that's why miraculous powers are at work in him. For when Herod had, arrest, had John arrested, he bound him and put him in prison because of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip. For John had been saying to him, It is not lawful for you to have her. Although Herod wanted to put him to death, he feared the crowd because they regarded John as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday came, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod so much that he promised an oath to give her whatever she asked. Having been prompted by her mother, she said, Give me here on a platter the head of John the Baptist. Although he was grieved, the king commanded to be give, it to be given because of his oaths and because of his dinner guests. He sent and had John beheaded in the prison and his head was brought on a platter and given to the girl. And she brought it to her mother, and his disciples came and took away the body and buried it. And they went and reported to Jesus. Now when Jesus heard about John, he withdrew from there in a boat to a secluded place by himself. And when the people heard of this, they followed him on foot from the cities. When he went to shore, he saw a large crowd and felt compassion for them and healed their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, The place is desolate and the hour is already late. Send the crowds away that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said to them, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, We have here only five loaves and two fish. And he said to them, Bring them here to me. Ordering the people to sit down on the grass, he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up toward heaven, he blessed the food, and breaking the loaves, he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. They picked up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve full baskets. There were about five thousand men who ate, besides women and children. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he went sent the crowds away. After he had sent the crowds away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And when it was evening, he was there alone. But the boat was already a long distance from the land, battered by the waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him, when the disciples, excuse me, when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. And Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But seeing the wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and took hold of him and said, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind stopped. And those who were in the boat worshiping, worshiping him, saying, You are certainly God's son. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of the Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized him, they sent word into all the surrounding district and brought to him all who were sick. And they implored him 
that they might just touch the fringe of his cloak, and as many as touched it were cured. Man, a lot of ground there here in chapter 14. Just a couple of points. Uh, look at John the Baptist. We, we read about the death of John the Baptist, and John the Baptist, Jesus has uh, the case of mistaken identity with John the Baptist. Remember, like, Herod thinks this is that Jesus is John the Baptist raised from the dead, and yet it was John the Baptist who was able to do what he was able to do because of his faith in Christ, because of his faith in God. Uh, it's an interesting turn of events there. Um, also, we see that when Jesus hears about John, it affects him. He withdraws from there. He gets into a boat and goes into a secluded place by himself. Um, in a very real sense, that this moment is the moment where Jesus really kind of takes a shift in his ministry. Um, I know he feeds 5,000 and he'll feed some more people later, uh, but it's the, the focus on the ministry shifts and he starts to tell uh, his disciples and people he's teaching more about when he's not there than when he is, while he is there. Um, it's an interesting shift to, to look for. Uh, it predominantly takes place, it's not exclusively that way, but it's from this moment on. And it's good to see that even Jesus is affected by the death of uh, his cousin. Remember, John the Baptist is Jesus' cousin. Uh, Next, we get to the feeding of the 5,000, right? So remember, the disciples had just been commissioned. They had just gotten back. They had just heard the news about John. Jesus says, let's go get some rest. Let's go to a secluded place. They get in this boat. People follow them. And they mob the scene as soon as Jesus makes land again. Not a whole lot of rest for the disciples. And in there, you can hear, almost hear it in their tiredness. They're like, send the crowds away. Let them go feed themselves. But what should we take away from the feeding of the 5,000? Sometimes we feel like we don't have enough, that what we've got isn't enough to handle the job at hand. But with Jesus, it doesn't matter. Jesus can use what you have. What you and I have, Jesus can use to a miraculous end. And so we need to make sure that we are open and willing to do the work, not just to set the work aside because it seems too big. I find it interesting that it's after they, after he feeds them, then he sends them away. Uh, it's kind of interesting. And what does he do when he, after he sends the people away, he sends the disciples away, he sends the crowds away. And he spends time with the Lord by himself to pray. I'm uh, hoping that that's that even if you're with me here daily, I hope you're spending time to be alone with the Lord daily. And you are finding time to hear from him, not just talk at him, but to also hear from him. And last thing I wanted to point out is the Peter, you know, Jesus walking on the water, he invites Peter out. Again, covered a lot of ground in this chapter. And Peter starts to sink when he pays attention to the situation around him, when he starts to lose faith. And Jesus says, you of little faith, why did you doubt? We are, Jesus wants us to be faithful. Being faithful is more than just making a decision for Jesus. It's about an active, daily, moment-to-moment, -moment, conscious, conscious decision to have faith in the Lord in everything we say and do. Man, I hope chapter 14 was a blessing to you. I want you to go on out, be a blessing to those around you, and I'll see you tomorrow with chapter 15.